The Ruger 1022 is very popular, and that for a simple reason. It's one of the best, if not the best, semi-automatic 22 long rifle guns out there. It's rugged and reliable. In fact, you might want to describe it as indestructible. Add to this its accuracy, and you already have a great package. But there's more. Thanks to the chambering and 22 long rifle, you have no felt recoil. That allows you to achieve a rate of fire that you simply cannot get with other rifles chambered for bigger cartridges. The rounds are dirt cheap, and there are plenty of them to find. You do not have to limit yourself at the range. Fire away and enjoy the fun. While you might not want to use a gun in this caliber for self-defense, thanks to its accuracy, it can do the job with the right shot placement. Thanks to the cheap ammo, training for it is no problem at all. Probably you own one of these rifles already, and you know a lot about it. However, there are things that most people don't know. So let's take a look and find out what these things are. Military use. Yeah, we all know that militaries all over the world use guns. We also know that when a gun wins a military contract, it's pretty much automatically successful. Now, what you might not know is that also the Ruger 1022 has been used by a military, the famous and feared Israeli Defense Forces. You might want to question the idea of employing a rifle chambered for 22 long rifle in a military capacity. And at first look, this really makes no sense. The power of these rounds is really nothing to brag about, so why bother with it? The reality is that the state of Israel and the Israeli Defense Forces are faced with many different threats. Not always is a bomb or a tank the right answer. They might just be overkill, and sometimes even a standard issue rifle might be too much for its intended target. Here the Ruger 1022 comes in. As a less lethal weapon, it's easier to use in many more situations than is possible for stronger rifles. This is especially the case when it comes to riot control. For its use in these capacities, the IDF chose a modified carbide rifle version. It comes with a suppressor and a scope. This way, it's a precise to target specific individuals within a rifle, and the position of the shooter is not given away by the noise of the shot. While this all seems straightforward, the use of the rifle has had its opponents. This led to its ban in 2001 by the military advocate general. However, the realities on the street necessitated its use, so it was reintroduced in 2009. While being promoted as less than lethal, it's better to describe it as less lethal. Specific individuals can be targeted and neutralized without endangering bystanders too much, like it would be the case with a conventional standard-issue rifle or sniper rifle. But it does not mean that people who get hit do not die from it. In fact, there has been a long line of fatalities produced with this gun during its use by the IDF. The Production and Sales this rifle is particularly successful. It's been in continuous production since 1964. This makes it one of the most successful rimfire rifles in the world. There is a big aftermarket support for upgrading and customization. This rifle has been sold more than 7 million times. That is a great testimony to its popularity among shooters, especially the ability to go planking with it without having to break your bank for the ammo is a big upside. Add to this the customization and the low weight of the gun, and you have a winner. 22 Magnum. Chambered for 22 long rifle makes this gun a great plinker and much more. But some people might think that such a puny round is just not for them. They want something more. So there was a version made for something stronger. Now it is not a much bigger round diameter vice, but a more powerful 22 round in the form of the 22 Magnum. It was introduced in 1999, chambered for the more powerful round. But the production did not run for a long time. Already in 2006, it stopped as there was not a high demand for it. The reason for it is simple. If you want a rifle with cheap rounds without any felt recoil, go the whole way and choose the 22 long rifle instead of 22 Magnum. The Magnum was more of a compromise, combining the worst of two worlds. It has still a small diameter, but costs more. Many shooters thought, why go this way and choose the 22 long rifle version? 17 HMR. There was a version called 1017. Practically a 1022 chambered in 17 HMR. This version of this cartridge did not make it into the heart of the shooters. The production lasted only two years from 2004 to 2006. The 1022-22 Win Mag. Ruger produced another version, the 1022 and 22 Win Mag. This rifle won the title Rifle of the Year in 1999. What began so well did not come as a guarantee for a success. Much the opposite. This rifle did not survive for much longer and disappeared in obscurity. Its missing popularity does not diminish its design. It was great and came with a good look. But that was not enough. People wanted it chambered in 22 long rifles, so that the 22 Win Mag version was doomed from the beginning. Versions 
There are many variants of this rifle available. For example, you get a rifle with a 20-inch barrel, a carbine with an 18.5-inch barrel, and a compact rifle with a 16 inch barrel. The most important one is the takedown model, which was introduced on March 28, 2012. You can disassemble it into two components, the barrel group and the buttstock group with the action. The case came in a backpack style holding not only the rifle, but also ammo and accessories. The takedown model is especially popular for its use as a survival rifle. There is a takedown light version available using a lightweight target barrel design. Very interesting is the SR-22 rifle variant. Released in 2009, the chassis is designed to mimic the dimensions of an AR-15. It uses the standard magazines as well as most of the aftermarket ones. The ergonomics follow the style of the classic 1022 instead of those of an AR. That includes the charging handle, safety, and magazine release. The Charger There was a pistol based on this rifle called the Charger. Introduced in 2007, it was discontinued not because of the market, but because of legislations. At the time, there were many states that did not allow a pistol to have an exposed magazine. Seeing the overall design of the rifle, turning it into a pistol leaves the magazine standing out in front of the trigger guard. Nowadays, there are other pistols with exposed magazines that show that legislation can change, and such a magazine is no problem anymore. A good example are the well-known AR pistols. Ruger understood this change as well and brought the Charger back in 2014. It comes with a laminated stock and a M16A2 style pistol grip. The barrel has a length of 10 inches and is threaded. You get 15 round magazines and the pistol sports a bipod. Aftermarket support. Thanks to its long production run and its number of sales, this gun has been very interesting for a number of companies to offer aftermarket support. This is helped by the fact that the parts of the rifles can easily be changed out. If you want a new stock, scope, or whatever, it does not pose any challenge. You can replace, slap on, and modify as much as you want. William Ruger the inventor of the Ruger 10-22 was William Ruger. He started his business in a small room. There, you put in some machines and produced its first lightweight machine gun in 1938. It was a success. The Army bought it right from the outset, which brought William Ruger full force into the business of producing guns. The Ban on Magazines There was a motion to ban magazines for the 10-22 with a capacity of more than 15 rounds. Not only does that alone make no sense, it makes even more sense seeing who really fought for it. First and foremost, it was William Ruger himself who made a stand on March 30th, 1989. There you have it, guys. The most important things about the Ruger 1022 that you have not yet known. If you know some more interesting facts, let us know in the comments.